I okay, all right. We 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 only record the talk. We don't record the discussion. Um, okay. Well, so if you just start again, just go back to the beginning. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Jack Gibson said, "You better get ready for the time when the phone doesn't ring anymore." And if you're just starting, it was a great story. But anyway, I, and I thought the idea of the phone doesn't ring anymore. I thought about it for a long time that we really need a TLA. That's a three-letter acronym to be able to talk about it. And then I finally heard someone crystallise it for me. Bay Warburton, uh, who was a friend of mine and I'd known for a long time, he spoke at the Bridge Street Fellowship oh, probably three years ago. And at that stage, he was a chief of staff for Mike Baird, the New South Wales Premier. And Bay talked about everybody wanted a piece of him, how busy he was, that he was loving the work because he actually had the power to get a whole lot of stuff done and help a whole lot of people, etc. But at the end of his talk, he said, and I'm aware of the fact that soon I will suffer from relevance deficit syndrome. Uh, relevance deficit syndrome, meaning he'd be out of the job, Mike Baird would have moved on, he would be once again a nobody and the phone wouldn't ring as much. Well, it wasn't too long until Mike Baird uh, retired for family reasons. And where's Bay Warburton now? Well, you could track him down, but you know, who knows? And so I've been thinking about relevance deficit syndrome. That is, you, you'd be out of the game in a way. Now, I, I've been known to complain about people wanting a piece of me. I worked out there's eight different ways that people can get me. Phone, email, SMS, WhatsApp, WeChat, Facebook, letter, and, and someone could actually come to my front door. Um, and and some, I don't know about you, but sometimes people wanting a piece of you drives you mad. But what if it stopped? What if it stopped? So RDS, relevance deficit syndrome, affects everybody eventually, even our former prime ministers. Uh, have you noticed every now and then there's just our former prime ministers of whichever colour you want, but uh, whichever political colour, every now and then they just pop up with uh, kind of unsolicited, gratuitous comments in the media. And it's almost like, hey, notice me, notice me. Um, on, a, on a much, much humbler, smaller scale, I, I've had a taste of it. In 2007, I was the Anglican Bishop of the Wollongong region, sort of from um, the Sutherland Shire down in the Wollongong, Campbelltown. It meant overseeing about 50 churches. So in Wollongong, big office, secretary, administrator, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, the phone rang all the time. Uh, and then at, at Christmas time, I would get 50 Christmas cards. I think Kathy, my wife Kathy and I counted them one year, 50 Christmas cards from people wishing me well. Uh, I was only in the job three years. I got too frustrated with different things. I resigned in December. And that year, instead of 50 Christmas cards, I got one <laughs> from a man in Mount Druitt who I knew and Jack, uh, anyway, and I know Kathy picked it up and looked at me and laughed and she said, 50 last year, one this year. I said, Great, thanks my dear for pointing that out. Um, and then eventually I, I resigned from the diocese. There's no scandal, there's no big drama. I just, I just had to go and do other things, I thought. And I'd worked for that organization for 20 years and I disappeared like pulling your hand out of a bucket of water. And that is you look as if it was never there. I just disappeared without a ripple. Um, I did some work with City Bible Forum. I said to Peter, if he could find me a chair, that would be all that I asked. And he did find me a chair. It was beside the photocopier, but it was a chair. Um, my, my point is, I think we're all going to suffer from relevance deficit syndrome um, at some time. And my guess is if you're in transition, you may have found it as well. I suspect we hate being buried in emails, but the one thing worse than that is not getting any. I think it's a time to consider our self-worth and where we get our value from. I don't mean to be an amateur psychiatrist, but I think uh, 30 years of doing this job, the two drivers that that drive people mainly are the quest for security and the quest for significance. That is, I want to feel safe and or I want to feel significant or important. We just drill on the look at the significance one. That is, you can call it, we want status or respect or significance. 
Uh, the English writer Alain de Botton, in his book, Status Anxiety, diagnoses that issue. The first half of the book is brilliant. He doesn't have many answers, but his idea about status and the anxiety we feel about it. And for, for so many people, our significance comes from, from our jobs. I mean, what's the first thing? I know, I know men anyway, you, you meet another bloke, the way men are, and the first thing you ask him is, what do you do for a job? And there's your, there's your ranking order straight away. And, and our status comes from being needed in the job, from our competency, from uh, does the markers of success, you know, there's the office and the car and the car space and the suit, if that's your industry, et cetera. There's an old man in the, uh, in the 80, uh, sorry, he's 80 something years old. And a number of times he's lined up meetings with me in the city. And I realized eventually there's no, um, uh, there's no agenda. He just wants to talk about the glory days when he was a very significant businessman. And that's okay. Uh, so an opportunity to rethink where we get our value from the New Testament, which had two really radical ideas in the, in the New Testament. I'm a, I'm a Christian follower of Jesus. Here's the two radical ideas. The first one is this. Jesus says that greatness comes not from status, achievements, money, the corner office. Greatness actually comes from serving people, from being a servant of others. So um, in Mark chapter 10, you might like, if you could take a note, read it later. Mark chapter 10, James and John, his disciples, come to him. Um, actually, their mother brings them, Matthew tells us, which is hard to believe unless you've had a mum. Their mother brings them. And they ask to sit on his left hand and right hand in his kingdom. They think he's going to set up a big political kingdom and they want to be treasurer and prime minister or whatever. And Jesus says to them, no, 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 no. That's the way the world out there works. If you're going to follow me, he says that literally, I'll read it to you. He says, not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. So greatness is found actually in serving and giving yourself to others uh, in their service. And they say, that's his example. He says, for even the son of man, that's his way of talking about himself, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Uh, now, it's interesting. It's easy to miss that. You don't, un uh, unless you kind of change your glasses and your worldview, you can, you can miss it. So I'm watching a remarkable example of it at the moment. Uh, my wife, Kathy, marketing degree, brilliant administrator, involved in running her family's uh, business here and in Brisbane and uh, all, all sorts of things that she does. And yet for the last five years, she has poured her life into caring for her parents. And I'm amazed at her level of, of patience and care. Uh, her dad died about two years ago. Uh, she's been over there with her mother all day, every second day, um, and cared for her, etc. Now, her mother's in respite care. Um, her mum is about to come and live with us as we rearranged our house. I'm happy for that to happen, uh, given that especially we're, we're recording this. I'm very happy for my mother-in-law to come and live with us. But Kathy's level of patience with her and love for her and how she set up the room she's going to live in it. But you won't read about that in the Financial Review or see it on the TV news or... And yet Jesus says greatness is found in service. And I wonder too, if we embrace that, it, it will affect our attitude to work as well. I'm not, it doesn't mean you won't work, but uh, the greatness will be found actually caring for other people and, and our workmates. And, and I've known business people who can use their entrepreneurial gifts to set up things to care for people. Um, now, uh, it's interesting that once you change, once we change that worldview, the relevance deficit syndrome doesn't really apply because you'll always be able to invest in other people. Well, sorry, there'll come a time, I guess, when even that will be taken away. And that is our, our physical and mental powers and things, our opportunities for that will ultimately diminish. And there's one more thing that the Bible says, and that is that value and significance actually come from knowing our creator. Um, so I'll read, uh, John, who is Jesus' closest um, follower, said this about those who accept Jesus' offer of forgiveness and trusting him. He says in John chapter one, yet to all who did receive him, 
To those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision uh, or a husband's will, but born of God. That is to, to accept Jesus' offer of forgiveness and friendship is to find value in being known by and cared for and valued by our creator. So there you go. That's what I'm thinking about. Relevance deficit syndrome, uh, a time to rethink uh, our value and that greatness is found in serving and caring for others. And ultimately, the one, the one that cannot be taken away from us is being known and cared for by our creator. And um, for some of you, all of you young guys, I look around, everyone's young. You may not be thinking about it yet, but I'm thinking about it a lot as I see this lady move in with us and pretty much everything our world values is being taken away from her as she come, becomes frail. There you go, Ko Kong. That's, that's some thoughts. RDS, Relevance Deficit Syndrome. Thank you. Sorry, I was trying to find my unmute button. Too many buttons on the screen. Uh, thanks, Al. Kong, um, do you want to stop the recording? <laughs>